today yes today we find ourselves all equally blessed on this journey through greater and lesser evils join us as we explore the hard realities and uncomfortable truths plaguing our society so without any further ado let's jump right in and rip this bandit off together ladies and gentlemen welcome back to greater and lesser evils i know you missed us because we missed you <laughs> I'm joined as always with the man you want on the front line. The tag. Hello, I guess. And then the heartbreaker who already was <laughs> with your girlfriend before you started watching this, so I already get mad at her, Xavier. What's up? Boys, how are we doing today? Doing good. Man, it doing feels good. good to be back in front of after all doing all these shorts. I know you guys love us. Thank you for the love. Thank you for all the everything Thanks you guys so been doing with those. We love doing them for you. This guy's gonna steal every scene possible. I can't help myself. He can't, and there's more coming, but thank you for that. But I don't wanna to take too much of your time. Today, today, we're gonna to do Leave the World Behind. We're a little behind with Leaving the World Behind, but we got there. So let's go ahead and start with the data sheet with Leave the World Behind. It's starring Julia Roberts, Marshala Ali, Ethan Hawke. Actually, it's Julia Roberts. Huh, I forgot to put the accent over there. My apologies. <laughs> well, you mispronounced names a lot. Uh, I figured <laughs> you actually got one right, I guess. You know, if we put a, a real of me mispronouncing names, I mean, we could just make that. I mean, <laughs> and so be it. Um, it's written by Marshawn, or sorry, uh, Ruman. Uh, see, there, there you it played is. right in into there it. Thanks there for it is. Alley -oop. <laughs> Uh, Ruman Alam and Sam Ishmael, drafted by Sam Ishmael. The budget was uh, 80 to 120 million. Note for this, though, um, what was her name again? Julia Roberts. Ah, yeah, her. Uh, she pulled in 25 million. She got the top bill on She this. was top billing? She top bill. For once. Yeah. A woman got top billing. Kind of shocking, right? Kudos to and Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, <laughs> indeed. I don't think she would have got top billing if the Denzel was supposed to be in Mashar Ali's role. Uh, also, this is produced by the Obama uh, production company, Higher Grounds. Uh, and just some notable awards. Uh, they uh, were up for best screenplay that they won for Sam Ishmael in that thing that you said didn't exist last time. Cine Euphoria. Yeah. Cine Euphoria. <laughs> Still doesn't count. <laughs> We never heard of it. Just make just came out of that way. Yeah. Right. You know, how many awards out there do we need? I mean, well, how many, do, do I need an award for putting my pants on the line? Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I mean, if there's a camera in front, yeah. that, that, that's probably I, an award mm -hmm. for it. I'm not going to even lie. Greater less people <laughs> only yeah. fans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No, thank you. What, what sick, I, I what sick bastard would watch this? On behalf <laughs> of, no, what sick person. of the GLE fans, <laughs> no thank yeah. you. You don't think they would watch his OnlyFans page? No, that's sick. different. Okay, you sick all people. right. I'm saying you. Yeah, I'm oh, saying, okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, leave yeah. comments below what you think with that, too, please. <laughs> Which OnlyFans would you watch that's, out of all three that's of them? That's sick. actually my OnlyFans I start making, and they pay me to yeah. put the clothes back like, on. No. They, like no more. You still get that money. I'm, oh yeah, I'm it's so like a stripper. Rich. The strippers still get that I'm money so when she leaves. I only work like twenty five seconds because it. Ting 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 ting. Starts. It starts with um, some alien lights in the background. Now we've talked about this. I know how you feel about aliens. Okay. Um, they they. It's so much misdirection in this movie. Well, yeah, they they start with some weird things in the atmosphere, you know, in the background, and you know, it's a. An innocent vacation, you know, like a stay, you know, a mini vacay, you know, that they're taking for a weekend. And, and, and it just kind of slowly with some ominous music, you can just tell, you know, they're, they're moving along because it's going to come off the rails. Yeah, true. I, I think the, one of the interesting things before they even start the vacation, Julie Roberts or gives a, a very nice monologue. And again, that woman can act. She kills and everything. I've been a fan since uh, Pretty Woman. Um, she stole the show from a seasoned Richard Gere in that role. Um, but she talks about how much she hates the world. Do you think that that's a prevalent uh, stance in society, right? Do you think a lot of people are hating people, hating everyone else around them? I would hope not. You know, uh, it, it, it's just kind of hard to say, you know, because when, when you're in inner, big cities, metro areas and whatnot, people are living on top of each other now. Rent is on the rise, you know, uh, inflation seven dollars for a gallon of milk kind of deals you know all those things get frustrating and uh you know people's wages didn't go up at the same time so you know versus rural where you're a little more spread out so i i think you know it, it just kind of depends on the territory but new york is a perfect uh backdrop for what is going on in this one you're not wrong yes people hate them 
people hate each other. <laughs> That's a very simple, very quick to the point. Yes, they they, they don't like each other. Totally point one, yeah. Yeah. point zero. Yeah, they they, they legitimately don't he like each other. He hates us. He no, hates he, us right now. It's still no hope out of I think I, I Dude, want to believe. Did just, you see that level of hate I had for yeah. them in our video? Oh my. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love him. But he, he I just seem to bring the best out of Xavier. <laughs> but no, I think, I think. Uh, the one thing she does, they, they state how they were kind of struggling, like you said. He was thought he might lose his job. And she just buys this vacation home out of the blue. Mm -hmm. She has no idea that the world's about ready to end around her. Just out of the blue, she said, We're gonna go on a vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you guys have bought on an impulse? No, um, but I, I can understand an impulsive vacation, you yes. know, especially as Very you know, sure. just get up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he just goes, look, let's just get out of here for a minute. Yeah. You know, reset, recharge your batteries. Fair, yeah. hundred percent. Yes, I'm the same with them. Like impulse, anything that has to do with uh, relieving stress and making you feel better, or just removing yourself from a stressful situation, is the best thing to do. It's good for your mental health. That's another thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Damn, uh, man. Yeah. Damn. And, uh, vacation is very He's good for your mental points. health. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a competition. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a competition. It's not a competition. But, but Xavier yeah. is winning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you want to get away, you should, if there's one thing you will invest, you should uh, invest in yourself is enough time to at least reset. And, and if vacation is part of it, you, there's, you, how do you say you can't pay for a peace of mind? That's what it Damn right. Right. Yeah. And cue to the ad for Greater Lesser Evil Travel Agency. We'll give you the best cost. <laughs> we will not do what that uh, Firefly, Firefly, what's the, what's the place that they, he sent them out to? The, Fire Island. Uh, Fire Island. We will not do yeah. Fire Island, I promise. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, moving forward, I hate this little girl. I hate her. Her. You and this hate, girl. H A T E. Hate, 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 hate. Hate her. Tell me how I'm gonna like her. Hate this little girl. She's a little Karen. She's a little Karen. She is the embodiment of what I hate in society. I'm gonna hate. I'm gonna go with this. Hey, I have no love loss for her. I'm not gonna spoil the movie. Wait, I guess not. You have any spoilers? No. Wow. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna we're gonna well, run away right now if he doesn't. No, well, no, 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 no. Was not expecting that one. It sounded like what? Wait. So what? this little girl is the embodiment of every little Karen to me. So I do hate her. Hey, tell, do you like the character? I don't. I you talking right about GH's daughter? No, 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 no. no. I'm talking about yeah, the, the little girl, Julia Roberts' daughter. Yeah, Julia, friends girl, With the big eyes. Yeah, yeah. I don't. She's just a kid and ignorant. You know, she's just uh, selfish, innocent. Well, I mean, selfish, ignorant. But she's a, she's the youngest, you know. And I don't I'm I don't know. Are you're you the oldest or, or whatnot. I am um, the oldest. But uh, you know, the youngest tend to always get their way. She probably doesn't have a lot of friends. It relies on her older Sir? brother, you know, for a lot of things. So like, she just seems like a typical younger sibling to me. Hmm. You want to defend her too? No. Okay. No, I, I can't. I can't defend her because I don't. I don't like her either. Like I, I yeah. think she's just a character that's used to. Uh, I don't. To me, to solidify what the underlying theme of this movie is. Yeah, I well, think that's what she is and, to me. And but she's going. certainly spoiled. You know, I, I definitely yeah. think that you know the the character her you know that she's playing is certainly spoiled. Yeah. You know, speaking of spoilers. What, now you're doing your own intros? All right. <laughs> did you know? Did you know in Jurassic Park, most of those dinosaurs are fake. Even the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, no, that one's real. Oh, okay. That one's got to be real. <laughs> <laughs> that one's definitely got to be real. See, I would, but I'll, I'll go to Velociraptor. I, I thought done. Velociraptor. No, dude, I have those were real. That was that most yeah. of those dinosaurs are fake. <laughs> so you couldn't control the Velociraptors, man. Those are true killers. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I think they kill one of those once a year, which is why McRibs only come around <laughs> once a year at McDonald's. It's not pork. It's not pork. It's not pork. <laughs> I swear we will endorse you, though, at McDonald's. I eat you every day McRib. for breakfast. <laughs> oh. Only for the McRib. That's it. Oh, I love the McRib. Yeah. 12 people Plus die on the McRib is back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the movie. Uh, they actually get to the vacation house. Uh, Ethan Hawke wants a little payoff. Julia Roberts walks away. And for me, being uh, married and, and being married, married, 
Uh, that little married sex scene was great for me. It, it really hit me in the feelies. I, I, I could really identify with her. We got 15 minutes. That's all I need. <laughs> oh, were they going to do it 15 times? <laughs> because I've been married 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> you ever pull a quickie? <laughs> Be like, we got five minutes. That's all. Look, five minutes is all I need. Just mm, mm. let's go. Pure action. That's yeah. it. Nonstop action. It's like a, it's like an action movie that would that it's, it's it's the equivalent of uh, what, what's the name? Oh man, I can't even come. I can't even come up with this. I can't even come up with this in my head because like you just threw me off. You threw me off so much. <laughs> I love it. I can't even see anybody. Yeah. Xavier can't yeah, do that's anything that's quick. That's like, Ladies that's and that's gentlemen out there. Like, oh. So let, let me dial into a subject. Everything where, takes a while. Let me dial you into a subject that puts you right back at home. The water. Big ships. Okay. So they eventually get out of the house after their little sexual exploit and they go to the beach. beach. Yeah. And they get the uh, the train effect here, which, yeah, let's just stare at the thing coming to us. So I still don't understand that. Well, when, when, you, when you think about harbors and, you know, even on a beach, you see things in the in the ocean all the way on the distant of the horizon all the time but they're usually broadside they're not really coming at mm -hmm. the shore you know and nobody's really listening to the little girl you know because she's probably annoying to them you know she's, she's background noise at this point yeah to the family she's just kind of like no one pays right. attention to her because everything she says is ridiculous yeah basically yeah. look what i can do yeah. you know and like, sure. yeah we've been doing that for nine years yeah yeah, yeah. so you know and they're taking naps, you know, and they're just relaxing, you know, and then they check on it, you know, 20, 30 minutes later, it's a little bigger, it's a little bigger. So I heard, and I've been doing a lot of time in the studio, and both you guys have, maybe had a little more time, and I, I'm not up to speed on this. I heard there was an incident with a big ship. Yeah. Tell me about that. So there's this, this is really interesting because, you know, Leave the World Behind came out a little while ago, and then just like a week ago or so, um, the Dolly is the name of the ship d-a-l-i the dolly had oh, okay. hit the francis scott key bridge mm -hmm. in baltimore trying to get out to sea mm -hmm. it lost power a couple of times and then it steered almost head on into uh, a column and the whole bridge came down wow yeah you know you so but simpsons obviously did it you of know course. it's been they do everything for seeing all kinds of crazy things if even if you're trying to draw parallels into you know one thing or another but like donald trump was president and simpsons definitely called that but here's a movie with a with a disaster you know with a giant tanker uh you know uh cargo uh, ship tank whatever yeah, you want to call running, it running running yeah. into the shore yeah you know very similar yeah. to what just happened in real life yeah um but in real life you know they were able to clear the the bridge to of everybody but i think like the construction workers that were filling some potholes yeah. so like six are dead or missing which yeah. is awful yeah um, so but, you're a conspiracy conspiracy theory guy. Wow, I couldn't even spit that out. That's all right. I heard there were some conspiracies behind it. Well, um, there there are there there are. So you have like the the idea that when they the bridge fell, they can see like you know the sparks. trace of sparks. Yeah. And some people, you know, like they believe that you know it's something more than what is seen, uh, which is. Some people are saying that, you know, uh, uh, what they call it, thermite. Some, some are saying mm -hmm. that, uh, that it could just be the electrical wiring, you yeah. know, because it is a bridge, it is powered. Yeah. But Wires come apart and spark. Yeah, yeah. sparks come apart, mm -hmm. but the way they come apart is such an odd thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, um, the other one that was really strange to me, and I have no idea if it's true, mm -hmm. but like uh, the city of Baltimore had said that they were going to pay for the repair of the bridge instead of the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Why? Ooh. Why? Yeah. You know, tin foil hats. Money. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Here it, they come. Yeah, but it's a lot going on with this, uh, that, that whole, the ship run to the bridge yeah it's a like it's so, it's actually so much that it, it will be overwhelming mm -hmm. so what i love put out information for us mm -hmm. is and that's why we do this it's life paralleling cinema right this is this is the greater than less levels really yeah. content moto hell of cons. coincidence yeah, yeah it's great mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the content real you life know, especially you know when when you're talking about you know catastrophic catastrophic events that are leading to possibly you know some sort of end of the world yeah. style or end of civilization as you know it yeah. and here's here's one right in a very large you know metro area during an election year mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's that's a fair nod. We'll definitely get yeah. some of those election politics on some movies going forward right. when we get closer to that season. Um, but let's go back to the movie. So they. Uh, they all run off the beach. They're all scared. The wildlife's all over the place. You see these deer scenes, which, again, I wish the deer would have won, just like the bear and the revenant. <laughs> I rooted for you, bear. Thank you. I had you. I love you, Leo, but the bear had to win. Um, but uh, so. Any, anytime you see Leonardo DiCaprio getting ripped apart, <laughs> you just. Oh, man. So excited. You know who was rumored to have that role before he bailed out Who's on that? that role? Matt Damon. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, then he definitely deserved to die. Deserved that he definitely one. deserved to die at that point, then. I'm yeah. sorry, it wasn't true. I just wanted yeah, to get okay. his hopes up. But <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> so, like, I would pay to see that. Peter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay to see that. I would pay to see that. Oh. You don't deserve Matt Damon. I'm saying that right now. You don't deserve it. <laughs> So let's cue the first awkward scene in the movie here. Uh, middle of the night, they get a knock at the door, and you know, Mashar Ali and his daughter are standing there, and we get introduced to what a scene I think that they want us to think is a certain way, but tell me how this scene plays out. Oh, How'd that feel? You, you feel this, uh, this racial tension. Um, you know, uh, Ethan Hawke, Clay, is, you know, really understanding about some things, you know, and there's Julia Roberts with her beautiful resting bitch face, yes. you know, just going in on them, you know, and and uh, G.H.'s daughter Ruth is being a real brat, a, a really entitled brat. Exactly. So she's not helping anything, you know, and and here here's, here's Julia Roberts' character, Amanda, just, you know, going in <laughs> yeah. hard. Right. She she turns into a straight bitch. <laughs> There's no other word to even describe who yeah. she is in that in a character. Yeah. And she plays it perfectly. Absolutely. So perfectly that in fact you find yourself getting upset in yeah. that scene. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah, very you, much so. You think to yourself, if this was my house, I think I have the right to knock on the door. So let yeah. me ask you both about that. I mean, oh. I'm I'm a white guy. I am what I am with that. Yeah. And this and I'm I, I love everyone. Actually, I hate everyone equally, but that's different. Hmm. Um, but have you guys ever experienced anything like this in real life? Can you relate here? What would you do if you were in that situation? Well, uh, me personally, I would I would absolutely be understanding, you know, in that situation, um, r r vacation or otherwise, you know. But if you're military trained and you know how to defend yourself and, and you know, and protect your family and things like this, uh, if, if, if I were just nobody... You know, I mean that that's that might be a little different. I might have talked through the door, you know, until he gave me a little more information and whatnot. But even if I were GH in that in that situation, I think he handled himself, you know, with with dignity and, and style and class, you know, to really try to explain to these people like, you know, hey, I know what it looks like. Looks really weird. But I would have led with this is my house exactly. from That's fair. whatever company it Makes was. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know. And you're yeah. one of the more articulate people that I know, and you're a striking presence in real life. How would you <laughs> take care of that? Uh, me striking presence I makes you laugh. Yeah. So, so He's not I, striking? I personally would have just left my daughter in the car. Okay. I would have went, knocked on the door, because first of all, I'm in a... I'm in a tuxedo. Yeah. Okay. And our model ten thousand yeah. dollars. That's tuxedo. my point. I don't, it's probably around four or five yeah, thousand. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know fair. anyone who goes door to door in a tuxedo and tries to take over home. Now that would be <laughs> just yeah. to go rob a place. Yeah. Hey, I'm I'm one hundred percent honest with you. It's, it's <laughs> that's that's new. So yeah. first of all, I'll probably take you a little bit more seriously. But uh, secondly, like I said, I would have just knocked on the door, left my daughter in the car sure. because I understand that right. this could escalate. Very fast, and the last thing I want to do is, is you know, like involve my child in a situation like this, mm -hmm. right? Same thing if I was on the other side. Well, that, that's kind of my thing too, yeah. because you know, the second Ruth, the second my daughter started mouthing off, you know, I've been like, this is an adult conversation. Exactly. You know, and, and it's, that, this is this. It's so much about this. It tells you you can you can say that this could be present day time you yeah. know what i mean where like kids are mm -hmm. allowed to express themselves oh yeah well, as opposed to when we were growing up <laughs> oh yeah you you couldn't say anything yeah and even a as a, to the head yeah even <laughs> as a teenager yeah you got a slap yep. you got a beat maybe you just got a random fist that came out of nowhere yeah. <laughs> it was like how who told you to talk yeah <laughs> <laughs> who, who told you to talk <laughs> right, you speak yeah. when spoken to. Can exactly. I have permission to talk? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's the whole point. Not yet. And that's, <laughs> Xavier, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Seriously, though, keep going. But yeah, so I, I would do that on the, on the opposite side. Yeah. It would be you know with uh, uh, Ethan Hawk, Ethan Hunt. Hawk. Well, I keep saying Hunt. It's Hawk. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. But yeah. with Ethan Hawk, I wouldn't. Have, I, as much as you know, she dominates the relationship. However. She would have she not she would have not come to that door. Yeah, and and I do like an aggressive woman in an aggressive role. Yes. you know, and Julia Roberts plays that so perfectly. Yes. you know, as an alpha female. Yes, you know, and and I do like Ethan Hawke's role in this because you know he's 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 trying to you know uh, simmer it. He's he's, simmer he's the a tension. mediator. Yeah, yeah he's absolutely. A mediator. And birds of a feather flock together, which is mm -hmm. why the hint here mm -hmm. that they certainly aren't racist. That mm -hmm. is. Is the fact that you know racists would probably marry another racist? You know they, yeah. they just kind of flock. Yeah. You know yeah, in their yeah. gross little circles. Yeah. You know so, you know you so what what they're alluding to here is that she's just a mama bear. Yeah. You know and and she really is trying to protect the family, but they wanted you to feel that I think. Yeah. 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 You know that it was it was a little bit more. Yeah. You know than than just the fact that some stranger you know knocked on the door and i think as we talked like you said that what this progresses is more of a caveman thing and we'll, we'll go with that going forward but so we'll progress the story here and move along the entire time every single human interaction up to this point or the, sorry going forward to this point from this point in the movie is everyone sizing each other up with the kevin bacon the mm -hmm. size up every mm -hmm. time you run into someone else the maid on the side of the road it's all about sizing up now and the survival things are starting to kick in but as yeah. i know that it's panic. So mm -hmm. you, yeah. you're really starting to feel that panic because, you know, it's a blackout and now things don't work. And, mm -hmm. you know, you realize how helpless you are when you're so dependent on technology. You know, if uh, Joe Rogan has this bit where he says, you know, if I sent you into the woods with a hatchet, how long, it, just a hatchet, how long would it take for you to send me an email? Yeah. You know, and, and you're feeling that. You know, even in the in its infancy, it's yeah. in the infant stages of what's really going on, because there's just a lot of confusion and chaos at the moment. Yeah, you know, what he was implying is uh, build an entire civilization, right? With only with just a hatchet, just a, yeah, just a hatchet, just simple tools. That's right. like how much it takes the brain power right. they, they go to through that. reinvent electricity yeah. to do all the things that put us back to modern civilization hydroelectric energy can right. i sign up for procreation because i'm not a builder there. <laughs> <laughs> you can only make them you can't fix them i can destroy i can't <laughs> make <laughs> so you, can only them. you can't fix them yeah. so with that being said they fast forward in the family dynamic like you said everything's going crazy around it um you're starting to see a relationship a good old sex appeal relationship develop between michelle and Ali and Julia Roberts because I think they play up perfectly when they get some alone time with that but some more things happen uh, no no cars GPS a horse sends on the side of the road well cue to Ethan Hawke he decides to leave his family alone in a house with strangers you gonna do that by then you know if if you're moving this along people have proven to be trustworthy both have children if the only thing that you care about at the moment is your children I absolutely do because even if things were to go bad, well, there's a hostage on each side. You know, if you try to take my kid, well, I could take yours right back and we can make a straight trade. Fair. So, I would have brought the daughter with me. I, I would have brought his daughter with me. Um, or Sean Lee's well, daughter. No, Jordan's daughter. Now it actually feels like hostage. Start off with, I mean, if anything, I would have just batted down the hatches, tried to figure out what's going on. I see, that, I see that the TV isn't working. I see that my cell phone hasn't worked. The last word I got from my wife from her last messages were hackers attack blah 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 <laughs> power grid. So, so the whole point is like he's not actually going out cold. He actually got a, a very snippet mm -hmm. amount of information. Yeah, and he still chooses to go out there. There's no reason to. Like they, if if anything, you go out for one or two things: supplies mm -hmm. or survival. Mm -hmm. They didn't need either one. So you sit and you wait and you see what happens from that point on. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I got a parallel for both of you in both questions before, before you transfer. We'll start with you first, uh, Xavier. Um, two fathers, two separate situations. Ethan Hawke runs into the maid on the side of the road, decides to leave her. What would you do with that? And then the other side, the other father, he knows his wife is dead. His wife is dead, especially after he sees that, that plane scene. Yeah. He wants his daughter to believe there's still hope. Hope's always the last thing that dies. What do you do? Both those questions. Oh, uh, first one with I see the mate. Well, I'll probably just pick the mate up. This is a, like I will pick the mate up. And I'll too. bring her back because at the end of the day, you can't you can't have too many people. You can. 
the more people you have, the more the more resources, resources you're going to use. Yeah, you're going to use. Sure. You, and you you may use more resources, but you also are able to do more. Mm-hmm. Like I said, more watches. You know, more ways to cook like food. Maybe she yep. has like some kind of experience. She's got like, some skills. Yeah, skills Let's doing like yeah stuff that you might have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then same, second one with the what was the second one? The daughter, the wife. Uh, yeah. The mom. Oh yeah. Do you I, would, I, would, yeah, I don't know. I would tell her straight up. Tell her like I would tell her what I believe because no matter what, it's going. It either hits you now or it hits you later. But one way or another, it already happened. Either it's already happened or not. But I'll let her know that like I have hope that she's alive. Mm-hmm. Right. Like hope is one thing, but I, I couldn't give us a, a solid until you know it, I can for sure like know for sure. That's fair. Same yeah. different. Well, uh, I, I don't want hysterical people on. You know, especially if if things are already spiraling spiraling out of control, I don't want any hysterical people on my hands. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would be reassuring until I knew for sure that yeah. she was absolutely dead. Yeah. I would just be like, "Look, she's she's alive." You know, as far as we know, you know, she's she's somewhere else right yeah. now. You know, bunkering down. You know, the same way that we are right now, and it's yeah. just going to be a while until we're reunited. Yeah. What about the uh, the first part? You had a first part? Yeah, the maid. You pick up the maid. <laughs> oh, I, pick, I pick her up. I absolutely pick yeah. her up. Like I so said, you have to pick the maid up. Yeah. I, I already, I already yeah. addressed that. Even if you can't understand her? Yeah, yeah it even if matter. I can't understand her. We'll, we'll eventually help. be able to, uh, you know, communicate, especially, you know, with, um, you know, what is going on. We don't have to understand each other. What we understand right now is fear and survival. You know, so she'll be able to show me what kind of skills she may have or, or, you know, I bring her, I bring her home and she starts, uh, you know, taking care of the kids or, you know, goes to the refrigerator and makes, you know, we'll figure out, you know, or sewing or something. But she, she will eventually show her skills if she wants to be part of the tribe. Say she was an attractive person on the side of the road. I think a lot of people dictate what they see on the side of the road when they're picking a stranger up, maybe that needs help. Uh, They've proven if you're a beautiful blonde with big tits wearing Daisy Duke shorts, you got a better chance of someone stopping and you go over. Or Xavier on the side of the road in Daisy Duke shorts, changing his tire, I'm sure a woman's gonna come over and help him change his tire there too. Give me 40 foot tire screws. <laughs> But that, that's actually a physical Are thing with Bugle Boy yeah, jeans you're wearing? You know? So we're not going to really address that, but I want you guys to kind of think about what would you do in that same scenario while we're going forward with that. So we eventually get home. Everyone lies to each other. No one's telling each other the truth. They fast forward, and the, uh, the Ethan Hawke, Julia, uh, Julia Roberts family decides they're going to leave, which, again, greatest decision ever, right? Right back to what you were talking about there. Yeah. They get on the highway, and what, and what do they see? What's the first thing that smacks them in the face on that road? Cars? Yeah. Random Teslas just ramming it into each other nonstop. Now, PSA, if you're the driver in a car, don't ever get out of the car. No, just don't get a Tesla. <laughs> they, uh... <laughs> We've actually seen exactly. this in some of the metro areas yes. where they go a little haywire, the self-driving cars yeah. and whatnot. So seeing something like this, if the first thing to go is technology, exactly. you know, and, and we can't control any of these things anymore. Why would you want something that, you know, would be a self-driving? Yeah. Yes, you exactly. Know, yeah. Without anybody around and, and they really don't know how to drive, you know, if, if all the GPSs and things are sure. gone, you know, and they're just now they're just weapons, you know, or if, yeah, yeah, they're just tools, destructive yeah. tools now yeah. that. Uh, you know they're not heat seeking you know yeah. but at the same time <laughs> you know the yeah. heat seeking tesla yeah. that's good yeah that that's really good that's really really good there uh Elon you guys Musk, really good? I have tons of ideas if you want to we'd love to talk to you uh, you're you're an interesting man uh why is it that the worst people in the world are always the richest i'm just going to throw that one out there no it's just that's just the perception because the the people's jealousy and things yeah, you know fair. why didn't i think of that idea yeah. you know it's yeah. It's not that they're actually evil or anything like that. I just had the best idea, and you know, maybe they were cutthroat in their business to get to where they are. But you know, it's people jealous of success. He does look like a Bond villain, though. Well, you know, until he gets uh, silver teeth, you know. And <laughs> have you ever seen Carl Schwab? Carl Schwab, the, wor- no. the head of the World Economic Forum. No, I, I, I invested. Like, is he he a, look like he a super a legit, villain too? No, no, he doesn't look. He is a legitimate <laughs> Bond villain. All right, that, that picture will be. Yeah, up there you'll see. Screen. You'll see when we put him up there. His name is Carl, Carl Schwab. Yeah, huh. yeah, I definitely invest okay. in Schwab Investments. So. No, no, no. He's not head of Schwab. It's his name. His name just happens oh, to be called. Oh, okay. Yeah, Carl, Carl, Carl Schwab. Schwab. Yeah, he's a, a Schwab. He looks like an actual. <laughs> uh, Bond villain. He actually, he even wears like black leather. 
Um, they go back to the house. You let them back in the house? Yeah. You of course I do. It's a strength in numbers thing for me. Fair. You know, when, when they're... When you have no idea who you can trust and you've already built a little bit of a relationship with somebody, you know, six pairs of fists is better than two. You know, that you don't know who you may have to ward off and, and you have something in common. You have children to protect. Yeah. You know, so uh, more more able bodies to defend is is better in this in a situation like this. You yep. uh, I could I will let them back in, but. I'll be taking my room back. Yeah. Like, oh, it's your house. Yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. house. Yeah, I'm not sleeping I, in the basement. Yeah, because no, last time right. I checked, it was my goddamn house. Right. Yeah. I'm but saying the, that. But the sun also rose and set. Yeah. You know? So are, are we on like day two? or? That, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's another, it's not really. That's another thing. The time frame is never established in this yeah. movie. Mm-hmm. It's just you kind of assume that this is like day two or maybe it's day three. Yeah. Because it could be day three for all we know. Because day one, they showed up. This could be day two or three at this point. Mm-hmm. But, uh. Yeah, at the very least, yes, I would let them back in, but... but Change that dynamic. Yes, because mm-hmm. right now, they, they've seen... They believe themselves to be in the position to actually give, like, dictate orders. That's mm-hmm. because they're sleeping in the main, like, room. Yeah, no, that's fair. And yeah. again, it's your house, so you yeah. should have that, that capability. So yeah. they fast forward the night. The husband bonds with the daughter, and uh, the wife bonds with the, G- the other G.H., mm-hmm. And they fast forward with that, and I honestly think this is caveman theory. Julia Roberts realizes that, or her character, realizes that Ethan Hawke in a survival mode is not the alpha male. And she's drawn, even though she is an alpha female, Mm. she's going to be drawn to that stronger male. And I think that's what causes that breach to where they both have. Yeah, I think that's that's the evolutionary pull that's in our genetics right now while we talk. Mm. That is for me. You guys didn't feel the same thing? I see it. I saw it as her manipulating him. Ooh, that's because a good that's what her, that's what her job was. Remember, she's, her job was an advertising. So is, is that her survival technique? That is her survival technique. She, she used him as like a human shield, no, no, just in no, case. No, it's just yeah. It's like, so it's South like parks that the yeah, humans. <laughs> exactly. So it comes it comes down to she's she's manipulating like them. She does, they don't know to be manipulated. That's why I say in this movie she is the alpha mm-hmm. in this movie. Oh yeah, like they're. The men don't even come close to like the level of power she's wielding, yeah. and they're free. They're freely allowing her to wield a set of power because mm-hmm. they don't truly understand yeah. the situation that they're in. And then but she's she like em- set herself up, and then oh. she embarks that power onto the little girl when they scare all the exactly. deer off. Exactly. Yeah. She taught. She's yeah. teaching the little girl how to be an alpha. Uh, yeah. I'm just saying, you're not wrong. I'm with it. again. Yeah. I think this is genetically in, inside what we're setting up. You know, yeah. who's not going to be an alpha little girl. That little girl. H <laughs> <laughs> a t e hate 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 hate. Sure. Uh, moving forward, uh, a voice goes off a couple of times, and eventually the son gets hurt. And we're going to cue up the Kevin Bacon uh, thing. Uh, I know this hit home for you. Uh, it, it almost sounds to me, well, with Mashar Ali to me, his character is that guy that says everyone's his friend, mm-hmm. but no one's his actual friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he overstated their their level of friendship, and that's what sets up that horrible situation. When he, when he gets to Kevin Bacon's place, yeah, when they go for the aid to help yeah. the, the son with the tooth yeah. falling out. It's really, really strange interaction because you know you you think you know who your friends are. Until something like this were to actually be there, and, and and I think we actually throw the word friend around too much, mm-hmm. you know, where it's actually co- acquaintances or just people that you know, yeah. especially with some neighbors that may be three doors down, yeah. you know. Whereas, you know, you you may give them a cup of sugar, but I, I wouldn't give them a kidney, you know. So when when you're <laughs> when you're when you're looking at, you know, this this kind of thing, you know, I, it's uh, there's a book out there somewhere where the they relate it to two uh, two beers and a puppy. Okay. You know, like how much do you actually trust somebody, you know, or like somebody for that matter? Would you have two beers with them? Most of the time you're like, yeah, but would you trust them with your puppy? You know, and, and lots of people when they go like, no, I really wouldn't, you know. And this is kind of one of those interactions where you think you really know because you're friendly and you wave at each other, yeah. you know, as you're driving by, you know, yeah. or checking the mail. Yeah, he, you know, he did some work for him on his house, too. Absolutely. Yeah, so he yeah. thought, he felt so, as though they had, yeah, they had threw developed him a, a rapport. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and he probably gave him a good prize, yeah. you know, because you're friendly and things mm-hmm. like this. But then when push came to shove, he's like, uh-uh. This is my family. Yep. And that's yours. Mm-hmm. So and you, would, yeah. would you help the kid? Would you help the kid? I helped the kid. 
I still help the kid because you know my my own moral compass tells me that I've got to do what's right. And if I have the means of helping them, you know, I wouldn't give them all of my medicine if it, what he needed was an antibiotic. I would give him some, you yeah. know, so you can get just enough to get help somewhere exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. Fair. But yes, I I absolutely help the kid. X. You know, the same same thing with me. I would I would help. Uh, but it's just the situation de evolved so fast. Yeah. That's what I think there's a real problem with this. Is the situation uh de evolved like so fast. Like But that's it, why it, I like what, Ethan Hawke's character in this clay, because yeah. he's really trying to de escalate it, it, exactly. you know, as, as real alphas or, But that also know. goes back to would you take your sick child with you? You know, like there. I right? I still do, but I you yeah. know I leave them in the car the way that they do yeah, because they do, yeah. I don't want to drive an hour somewhere yeah. just to have to drive. That's two hours away. Whereas if I brought them with me to the help, yeah, then I can help them immediately when I find the help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a fair assessment right there. Um, I don't know if I help. I honestly don't know if I help. I, I I'm probably the one that makes that situation worse, and someone got shot. Yeah. Because at that point we get you got to protect yours with that, but I think that what the level is. I mean, obviously I wouldn't shoot either. You'd be like, "Come on in, yeah, we're good. Do, yeah. do your thing." Right, but 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 again, that's the difference. You know, when you really know people versus people that you're just acquainted with. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a huge difference there. And that's I think the striking thing that we talked mm -hmm. about with that. I think he's that guy. We all know that guy that likes to say he's phone friends with everyone. Man, everyone yeah. loves me. Oh well, yeah, you're likable. You know. Well, yeah. well so another thing to remember is that like GH doesn't stay there. That is like mm -hmm. a house. he stays in the city. Yeah, most of the time. Well, yeah, he's yeah. A successful. Yeah. Uh, he's very successful. Like trader. Is, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's a trader. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that means that that house is normally unoccupied, right. which means that that the last work he did was maybe it was years ago, maybe sure? it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, so he's he's basically just an associate walking up to a stranger like, hey, I heard you got some yeah. antibiotics. I thought we were boys. I thought it was boys. Yeah. It was like, dude, I haven't seen you. <laughs> and so, like, yeah. The same thing with that. At least they start sharing information. So yeah. we'll cue back to when Ethan Hawke was out. He got a propaganda statement that the son was able to read because he played video games. Video games do save lives. See? <laughs> Let your kids play video games. They will help them someday, I promise. But um, he's able to read in Arabic. It means death to Americans. And then they go forward and Kevin Bacon shares that his buddy... North Koreans. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's a little bit of uh, propaganda. Oh. They're sharing, though. Mm -hmm. They're starting to bond a little bit. Bond over yeah. that common ground of survival. And I think we're really not talking too much about the disaster that happens because, honestly, that's secondary to the human interaction exactly. and everything else. Oh, this yeah. movie is about inter human, human interaction. It is about, exactly. It's yeah. about human interaction. What you what you do don't do how you react yeah how oblivious everyone really is oh, yeah. or and, how obvious you put and it and how prepared some people are versus the unprepared exactly yep yep, yep. and let me, before I wrap back to my the last point I want to hit up I want to ask you guys by judging uh, you're both survivalists and I would be we could go into war together we get in a bar fight together I'm sure we'll talk about that some we could go anywhere I know the two of you got my back and we'll be able to survive. This like, family yeah. unit that you see right now, Kevin Bacon, not the side. Kevin Bacon's going to survive. What do you think the chances of survival of the people that we see in this are? They'll be dead in two days. Slim and none. Yeah. You know, the, the, the problem there when you, when you look at typical civilians that weren't trained, you know, unless they were like Eagle Scouts, like the Eagle Scouts and things like yeah. this, know how to build fires. You know, they know how to do... Uh, they know how to survive. Yeah, Just they know how to build traps skills. to eat yeah. rabbits, exactly. you know, and things like this. Exactly. You know, whereas you give me way too much credit because I don't know how big of a trap to catch a package of Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> like, where do Oreos I, in the wild tell, even... Are, I, are they tree-dwelling? I, I, I tell, have no I can idea. tell you, it's, a, it's, called a, it's called a convenience store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. First place gets rated is a convenience yeah, store. That's called Nitro. Nitro. Yeah. Nitro. See? You put Nitro over there, I'll catch all the orders. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying, yeah. So I, that's what, I'd be uh, trying to plant taco bushes. Yeah. You know, like, so, it's just... <laughs> yeah. you, you'd have to tell me, like, that's not how any of this works. No, it doesn't come out fully taco. <laughs> right. <laughs> With the meat on, Wait, on, there's on a Pico the de Gallo dish. I don't yeah, think I so. Oh, so. man. <laughs> I wonder where Pico de Gallo uh, came from. The guacamole tree. Like yeah, the guac. Pico, it's spice. That, that's yeah. about, you know me. That's about as much spice as I can handle is Pico. No, the, the, the most spice that you can handle is carrots. So, I don't think, Why are these carrots so spicy? Does anybody want some raisins to, to reduce the spiciness of this potato salad? Man, that mayo's spicy. 
<laughs> you know, the worst part is he's not wrong. Right, right. So uh, with that being said, we'll wrap the movie through with this. Uh, they progress. They bond. They, they get in so many situations that, again, they're dead. And the one person that seems to benefit out of all of this is the little girl who goes off on her own. Goes and finds the secret bunker house, stuffs her little fat face and with she food. She doesn't help anybody. <laughs> and watches the Friends episode as the world ends. H A T E, hate, hate, hate. I can't blame the little girl for that, though, Man, because she is just a little girl. I hate this little girl. She so does. Much. I, <laughs> I hate this little girl so much. But, Thank you. Yeah. But she's not mindful. She doesn't I, know the ways of the world, it. you know. And and maybe after she sleeps off her sugar high, <laughs> then she goes, "Oh yeah, I, I, I have a mom and a dad and a yeah. brother, you know." No. I'm gonna go tell them that. Right. Oh, that there's I forgot. food and things and shelter. I, I locked myself inside of this bunker for the last like ten years. You're like, wait, what? I didn't know it was on a time lock, too. Bunker. Oh, what if that locked her in there and she died? Saying, that's what I was wondering. She's going to be the, the fate of the human race. Exactly. Wait, she, is that the plan of the apes? Do the apes take over and then she's there? Is uh, that a spoiler? No, they've already, I don't they, think so. They, they, oh. They've killed everyone at that point. Yeah. And they look at her and be like, she's not worth saving. Uh. Let's go ahead and kill it now. <laughs> With that being said, we're going to go and kill this movie now. Let's go to the love tester. So you guys can see, we got a brand new thing. You wanted it. We gave it to you. Brand new... Uh, fonts and we can track us tack by tack while we're talking about it uh tank what you got i'm going with wonderful here i don't i don't think it was you know incredible but i don't think it was awful i think it's a middle of the road at best um it tackles real subjects you know it is thought provoking about what would you do you know yourself in a situation like that uh who would you align with and things but uh i mean at the end of the day um there was some great acting in it and uh, but it's it's not something that I would go to and watch again. Next, uh, I, I, I label it the same way as uh, wonderful because at the end of all of it, at the very least, this movie does is is that it it causes you to think. You think. That's, yeah, you think a lot yeah. about this movie. You do Absolutely. if you pay attention. There's a lot of things to definitely catch your eye. Exactly. Like for me, as I go, as I talk about, it, is that this movie is the best scenario for the apocalypse to happen. The mm -hmm. water still runs. The power's still on, right? Yep. There's, there's, there's running water. You got power. At the very least, I mean, and most of the, most of the supplies are still left behind. Mm -hmm. The cities are still in shape, mm -hmm. right? Everything around it. You could, you could, legitimately, they're in a perfect like location. But I guarantee you, all of those people are dead. Mm -hmm. All of them are dead in two days <laughs> because they're just that stupid. <laughs> the fact that you know, what I, what I like what they show is the the lack of just survival skills of how the the kids go out into the forest <laughs> with zero. It's like absolutely. they're devolving. Yeah, with with no no socks on. Yeah. Right, you just go you can go in the woods. It's like you never heard of ticks before. <laughs> It's one of the weirdest things. I was like, why would you walk out? Like, wait, what? Do they, do they not know? You just saw a deer. Yeah. That means that ticks are everywhere. Are some, somewhere there. <laughs> yeah. And That's the tick I'm, got them. Yeah, and the tick got them. The deer yeah. tick, too. Yeah, deer tick. Yeah. And like then Lyme we, disease and things. And then you know what happens after the fact? Julia Roberts and the girl go out into the woods into that shed <laughs> with short song. <laughs> True. You're like, wait, what? So, because they're city dwellers. They, exactly. You know, they really don't they, understand. They have zero survival skills. Yeah. Zero at all. Zero. <laughs> gotcha. So, I have a request before I get to mine. If we ever interview, or not interview, if we ever review the tick, will you wear the tick costume? <laughs> you got to put that big blue thing I, on? I don't know. I can see that. I can <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Okay. All right. All right so, uh, <laughs> I'm going to make it simple. It's wonderful for me. I watched it four times. I'm not watching it again. It, it's got a value. It's thought provoking. Uh, it's, to me, it's just one of those movies you watch and you never watch again. Fast forward, best of show. Where are we putting it? Uh, below, below, uh, above Ricky Stanicki. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, but below Barbie. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got no Sandwich argument with that. I, I think, yeah. uh, I think that fits with that. Um, great. Great acting. I really think I w really wanted Denzel. As soon as I read that Denzel should have been in that spot, uh, to me it was lost. I think it could have been a great Denzel movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached that time. We got a few more episodes coming for you this week. Please stick around. You like what you're seeing. And obviously, it looks like you are. We appreciate all the attention. Thank it you so much. It hits us deep in the feelings thank here. Thank you so much. You guys are the best, and we do this for you. At the end of the day, thank you very much.
We'll see you soon. See ya!